not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. You can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Welcome to the Tulips and Honey Show, where Lauren interviews authors and engages leading reform thinkers and theologians, all to see the Lord's name glorified, his church edified, his people encouraged, and the lost reached with the gospel of Jesus. Now for your host, Lauren. Hi, Hi, Louise. Welcome back to Tulips and Honey. I am your host, Lauren Herford, and today I am joined once again by a very good friend, Dave. I have to tell you, you are currently at, at like pace to sort of push some of the most joined most visited co-hosts for the program i mean uh, I, patrick and Kristen are going to have to really fight to hold on to their current you know um i don't even know if there's an award or a name for it but they come on the show more often than anybody else but you are definitely taking that on and, and with a vengeance dave jenkins once again joining me on the program today we're going to be talking about so good to be here and I, I, you want to share a special announcement don't you not only are you joining me on the program quite often but you have actually been an incredible blessing you have been helping me so much with editing and scheduling and helping me stay on track because it's obviously something everybody knows that i struggle with quite a bit more so lately than i ever have before with the insomnia taking over my entire life and so you have been a tremendous blessing you've been helping me so much at, and just just the fact that I have like that, that extra, not just extra time, but that sort of reliance that there's somebody else that, that I'm not alone trying to get all this stuff done. I'm so thankful. But if, if, um, if anybody wants to reach out to you, are you available to help other people? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'll take a look at your podcast and let you know if I can. We'll at least talk about it. See. Well, so if anybody is, um, I mean, I know, I, I know there are a ton of podcasters that listen to this show because you guys um, all troll me on Mega Mega Friday lists, which is now Mega Thursday lists. I think we're going to probably keep it on Thursdays, but you guys all come on on Thursdays and troll me. So I know that you guys are all listening. And so if you're a podcaster and you need some help like me, if you're floundering and uh, and you need somebody who is actually really experienced, Dave, you've been 2001. Yeah, yeah. I started doing, I had a radio program six years. And then I started actually podcasting, doing interviews and stuff since 2015. I've done over 350, you know, interviews. So well, every, everybody, Crazy. Michael Horton, you know, Horton on, I've had Owen Strahan on, I've had, you know, Stephen Nick on. So just, just. Uh, Odie Bauckham. Odie Bauckham, you know. Uh, that was a big one. You know, it goes That was exciting. Yeah. Yes. Your list of interviews is really impressive. So you've obviously gotten like a great handle on podcasting and interviewing and, and all that stuff. And you've been just a tremendous help. It's, it's been just the encouragement of having somebody that's like, Hey, listen, I know, I know how to do these things. It, it's like a breath of fresh air. Not that like other people haven't come up listening to me and you've helped. I'm not saying that you guys aren't a huge help because there, there have been other podcasters that have come up and said, Hey, here's a little bit of advice. Uh, but that that's actually not what you're doing. You're spending hours each week helping and editing and doing all this stuff. And it's just, amazing. it's been absolutely fantastic. So anybody listening to this, that's like, wow, all of a sudden Lauren's podcast looks and sounds so professional. That's because of Dave, not because of me. So please don't <laughs> misunderstand. I'm not getting more professional. I just have a professional actually helping me now. So we're, wait, I'm a professional. <laughs> that's that's <a> right. <laughs> <We're> all... <laughs> I told you guys, like I told you guys last time we talked, uh, yeah, I'm pretty goofy. So and since yeah. you're going to be goofy, I'll be goofy too. So I'll join. Yeah. Bloopers. We're goofy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> any, any kind of goofy people definitely do well on my program because I have to be goofy. Well, we have yeah. a serious topic though to discuss today, even though it's a serious topic, we're going to be goofy anyways, because it's, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's like one of the one things that I have to deal with constantly. People reach out to me and they're like, hey, you know, this is serious topics. Maybe you should take them a little more seriously. We do take them seriously. I'm taking all of this stuff seriously, but that doesn't mean that we can't also laugh and have a little bit of joy in the mix. And that's going to be at least a portion of how we handle this, because this is one of those topics that people can either get really lax in where they're not studying scripture. They're not reading their Bible. They're not learning and growing. Maybe they're going 
through a season where they're just, they have no motivation or you can go the opposite direction and be so legalistic. And that unfortunately causes pride in, in a Christian where we're all of a sudden we're like, well, yeah, but I read three chapters today. So how many did you read? That's not good. We don't want either of those. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, and I'm, I'm talking about Hello, myself. Buffet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. We're being serious now. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Sorry. Serious face. We can do that. I don't even have a squirrel sitting anywhere. I don't, I, that's because I've misplaced my puppets. I'll be fine. But somewhere, hopefully the dogs didn't eat him, but it is important that we keep that balance because we, with these things and also the mom guilt, the sort of guilt that comes over people whenever they're not reading the scriptures as much as they wanted to, especially as new believers. This is something that I went through for like a year. Once I got saved, Dave, I'd love to hear if you've gone through this where like I wanted to know all the stuff and no matter how hard I tried like I would study and study and study At a certain point like my brain would just shut down and there would just be no more intake of information and then I would spend the rest of the day feeling guilty that I couldn't remember what I had just <laughs> studied and I was so hard on myself that I was more discouraged and that actually causes Sometimes it can actually cause a little bit of the lax attitude of, uh, towards scripture. Have you ever gone through that? Yeah, I mean, I've counseled people that I've definitely gone through that. And the thing, the thing is, is, you know, when you're talking about this, Romans 8, 1 says there, there's therefore now no condition for those who are in Christ. We have to remember, we always go back to the context, like context, context, something. Yeah. But therefore, it takes us back to chapters 1 through 3, which talk about, you know, how sinful we are in every way, morally, uh, ethically. In every way, spiritual, we're, we're bankrupt. We're, we're as mm -hmm. bad as it, it's, they've been, it's been said. We're as bad as it gets. It's it's true. We are as bad as it gets. Yep. And yet it could still be even worse, uh, you know, without the restraining power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, right. Believe it or not, it, it could get worse in this world without the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but at, at the same time, it's it, people struggle with this because they think, oh, well, this works for this person. Or I'm going to check this. And uh, even, even how we... I think we've talked about this, we've talked about it on my podcast. It's been a cookie cutter approach to discipleship where, okay, here's a one size fits approach to, to Bible reading or whatever. And then guess what? Uh, that doesn't work for people. You have to exactly. take the principles of the word out and, and uh, help them explain those. Okay. It, when we talk about legalism, we're talking about adding something to to the Bible. Now, there are people that say, you know, Bible thumping Christian, whatever, because <laughs> you take the but that, that's actually a compliment because you, in is. most cases, you you should be if you're a Bible thumping person. Yeah, that means that you're taking the Bible serious. Now, you right. could be a Bible thumping jerk, and <laughs> that would be really bad because you know we're not. <laughs> that supposed doesn't to be happen. Jerks. In Reformed yeah. circles. No, oh, no Wait, reformed no, people are super gracious. No, no, never. No, <laughs> no, we're, we're never. If you no, can't see no. me, if you couldn't see me, if you can't see me, I just roll my eyes in honor of right. the statement. Yeah. Yes. For those of you listening, there's yes. hardcore sarcasm going on yes. with, with these sort of things. Wait, we're being sarcastic? What? Oh, no, we have to man. be serious. Sorry. You have to put on your serious pants and be super serious. This is a serious topic. No, it is, it is so pants. important. <laughs> That's like, that's the, um, that's sort of the pride though. Like I mentioned at the beginning, a pride that comes over people. And I've heard people say, if you're not reading such and such each day, then you're definitely not saved. And that, that's not actually something that we scripture anywhere. We don't see anywhere in scripture where it says, if you're not reading three chapters a day, that, that you're, you're not saved, that those are, those are ritualistic ideals that are important and helpful. Like it's helpful to have a goal in mind. There's nothing wrong with that, but people do tend to take it and they, they tend to make it, like you said, a cookie cutter version. If you take that cookie cutter version and then say, this is what all the church needs to be doing or else you're in sin or you're, you know, probably not saved. Definitely adding adding something to script's not there. And it's also very discouraging, even if you're not going taking it that to that extreme. It's discouraging for people who are struggling just to get through a chapter, it, especially if you're in a difficult spot in scripture where the the ideals, the theological stuff is really deep and it's taking you time to get through those theological doctrines and stuff. You shouldn't feel discouraged because other people are reading so quickly. 
that's why it, it's it's an it's not an annoyance, but it is frustrating to me to see all these people at the beginning of the new year that are like, we're we're gonna do this reading um plan together and everybody's gonna be this amount of chapters each day, and we're all gonna encourage each other. That's that's not realistic. It's great to encourage people. It's great to do this kind of stuff together, but it's not realistic for every single person. Eventually you're going to get a cold. You're going to get the flu or you're going to get sick or somebody that you love in your family is going to get, you're going to have to take care of them or you're going to have extra stuff. It, like for you, Dave, you're, you've done three. There are going to be times whenever your work takes you away from the time that you have at home and your private time. You're not going to have all the time that you once had. You, you know, we enjoy those times, right? Time. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Extra time during the day? No. What's that? What's that? I don't even know. No, you're, you're so sleep. right. You're so you're so right. Like, I mean, it, it's it's true. It, as as reformed people, we believe in the means of grace. Really mm-hmm. sets the the right motivation for you know why we're able. It's it's not an ultimate thing, but it helps us to grow in the ultimate thing. What I mean mm-hmm. is. The ultimate thing is to be like Jesus. So what is prayer and Bible reading and church attendance, worship, you know, sitting under the word, all those things are a means of grace to help us grow in the ultimate things to grow to be like Christ. And that's, that's what we need. We have to balance. If people are saying, Hey, Bible reading as your advocate is legalism. Well, then well, we have to come back and sue and say, Bible reading is absolutely a delight. As I argue mm-hmm. in my first book, The Word Explored, which about yes. many times. I was just gonna I was just gonna list that. Yeah. It's it's a delightful duty. What I mean by that is, hey, God has given us his word. He delights over. I mean, he, for heaven's sake, the Trinity delights over it's okay. That's not that's not even entering into the Trinity debates, but it's just saying that's what the Bible says about the Trinity. They delight in the Trinitarian joy of one another. And out of the joy of the Trinitarian fellowship, they decided uh, to create man in his in the image and likeness of God. And so God delights over everything that he has revealed. Uh, yeah. You know, he's he's created us. He delights over us. He de- delights over his word. He delights over the world in which he made. Uh, and this is this is such an important thing. You know, we're not going to push this and take it because because if I push this, we're really going to go into the heavy waters and we're going to get distracted and go have a trail so the i don't ever is, get distracted so yeah, i know fine. i i know you don't not ever <laughs> not ever <laughs> uh, picking you on your own podcast uh, I, feel like, I, I feel like this is gonna come back to me here soon uh, it was, it's okay <laughs> yeah I, i'm waiting for it it'll be fun no but <laughs> yeah. you know this even the Psalms, they use this line of delight. And, it, mm-hmm. and it's a good thing for us because we need to delight in God and we need to understand what God delights in. And this actually takes us way past the this this objection that, you know, you know that reading the whole Bible is a legalism. It's, it's something to check on. That's why people quit because they don't have the right motivation. And, and we have people, we tell people at the beginning of the year in our churches, well, here's the, here's even how it's framed in church my whole life. So but pretty much how it's framed is, okay, we're joining, join us, join me in reading the whole Bible this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, okay, there's nothing that sounds innocent and it's a good goal. Join us as we read the Bible. So we are joining with the church and reading the Bible. Okay. That's great. But let's reframe that in, in a little bit better way. So subtle. You might even not notice it. Stick with me. Instead of saying, join with me in reading through the Bible. How about how about you join me in delighting in the word God has given to us and not even the Bible. How about you join us as we read through the book that we're preaching? Yes, the church? that is a great way to do it. I love that. I mean, that's expository preaching is really exciting in that you literally are going through verse by verse and you're you're dealing with each theological issue and that makes it the perfect way to do that. It's such a great idea. Next week, we're going to be dealing with it. Like, and if any of um, us enjoys the uh, Bible, the men's Bible study with Steve Lawson, it's a certain that's a way also. He's going bit by bit and you can like that. That's such a better option than just saying, hey, we're going to re- Nondescriptly, we're just not not that there's anything wrong with willy nilly going through scripture, but that's not actually studying scripture. You can take a lot of words in without understanding or really comprehending. And, and we we hear you know about people like Susan Heck, and she's a great example, and and I adore her, and I think it's amazing. You hear her know like as she she has the oh, sorry she has the entire New Testament memorized. But that took her decades. She wouldn't sit and say to you, rather study scripture, just focus on memorizing. That's not her, that's not her goal. 
She memorized scripture while she was studying scripture and it took her decades to do that. That's the goal, right? So like we can hear people talk about memorization and just getting through chunks and chunks of scripture, but how, how is that actually edifying? If you're just reading through something you don't understand, that's discouraging. And we talked about this in that, the same uh, interview to that interview when we discussed your book, because we did, we did discuss how discouraging it is to read something you don't understand. And that is why some people quit. Like they have these big goals. They can't wait to read through scripture. And then they get to portions of it where they're talking about so-and-so, but get so-and-so, or even the more difficult, like somebody getting chopped up and like judges, it, there's difficult portions and they don't understand and they get discouraged. That's because you're just reading through huge of it without having any kind of context it. Yeah. That that's a problem. It's great that churches are encouraging people sure, but it would be even better if it was done in in a in a way like you just mentioned it in a biblical way where people are also encouraged to be. So there's a big difference, yeah. right? Studying scripture and just reading it. Can you can you put more of the details of what that entails? Yeah, you the difference between reading and studying or Yeah, like how how would somebody if they really want to study and understand, what would you recommend they do rather than just read their big chunks? Um, well, reading what the church talking about is such an important thing. You know, I think that's probably my biggest piece of advice to help people with biblical literacy, because not only are you sitting look through your pastor's preaching, preaching, but you're also as you're doing that, you're reading it and taking it in and studying yourself. Your your knowledge of that book is is going to be that much better than just, you know, smoking through reading through the the text that that you read, you know, we all, we all do it. We're all guilty of it. Mm-hmm. So we have to slow down. This this what this does is it gets us to slow down to get us to focus on a specific book to know, you know, what is the theme of that book? What is the purpose of that book? Who who's being who's it being written to? Uh, what mm-hmm. is, what are some doctrines that this teaches? Uh, I think in my I think in my book in the application uh, chapter I say this I have a friend who's a biblical counselor and he says how much of God's word can you personally and that mm-hmm. should be our goal when we're reading the Bible when we're studying it how much of it isn't just how much can you read of it but how much of it can you access to pull it out when you're ministering to somebody who's Let's say you're, if you're a pastor, you're listening to this, you're, you're at the hospital. How much of it can you access a moment? Say you don't even have a Bible with you. How much of it can you access to minister to that person? Now, you, you know, you should be ready. We're supposed to be ready to give a reason for the hope that you provide. You know what? It's funny. R.C. Sproul said, somebody asked him, how do you prepare for a sermon? Or how are your sermons so polished? He says, well, I, I spent about an hour work sermon and then they're like, what? <laughs> but I spent years, you know, studying and it, it yeah. just to show that you know, reading the Bible and then studying the Bible, taking it in and understanding, okay, like people are like, one of the things I've been told about people like about my preaching is I'll give the crown. So there's something like, especially like in the gospels, especially, mm-hmm. or maybe even in, even in one of Paul's letters, there's always some sort of like cultural background that that if you just read it you're like hey i don't know what that really means and the reason you don't know what it means is because you don't understand like the cultural background or the significance like john right. 4 well i'll use an i'll use a real example because i just made a claim and and we talked about right last time it's like yeah. you can't just claim and then not back it up so you know since <laughs> I, I did teach that in john 4 for you no know, what's what's how jesus goes you know from from another part from from galilee to, to Samaria. Well, the, the Jews don't, the Jews hate uh, the Samaritans. They have all sorts of issues over, you know, where, where should the center place of, of worship be? Should it be, you know, where they are or should it be in Jerusalem? And, you know, Jesus even travels something like 20 to 30 uh, miles away. You know, this isn't his sand. This right. isn't in a, this isn't <laughs> in his moped, you know, this isn't right. in his, you know, motorcycle. Jesus is coming down the road. This is in his car where it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. This is walking. This is probably a whole walking. journey. And then he comes to this lady and, and does this on purpose, per- perfectly and on purpose to go to this lady at the well at just the right hour. And she's out there, you know, without women in that culture. This is another cultural thing in that passage, just to draw it. You know, yeah. women in that hour were to come early in the morning. They weren't supposed to come at, at noon. You know, that shows that she's an outcast. And Jesus later t- shows her she's, you know, had multiple, you know, 
affairs. Yeah. Jesus knows, it shows, not only does Jesus know where he needs to be to minister to somebody, but he knows how to minister to all real needs. You know, that's just one yeah. way that we could take that whole chapter. And then, and then, you know, he, she asks, who are you? Are you like a prophet? towards the end. And he says the most amazing thing. I, this is before the other, you know, seven, I am, he says, I am. And he, wow. and that's, that's amazing. Cause then it does, she goes out and evangelizes people. She is met biblical yep. Christ. She is in minister to, she met. And then what does she do? She goes out and tells how they meet Jesus. And she even brings them back to Jesus from her town. Right. And, and, and you context, if you just read through it, yeah. but that's a great example. There are actual things happening that we don't want in America. And I, and a lot of the people are like, oh, there's um, inconsistencies or contradictions in scripture. Sorts of details explain all of it. Like there's literally not a con contradiction in scripture explained through just really understanding the context and the cultural difference. And the, the great thing, and I, I, if you have time for this, if you do have time to read the whole chapter, the whole chapter four, and then go back bit by bit because then you have an overall view of it and then you're seeing each individual but if not you you have you have that ability to diverse and understand and then get these contexts get them understand them search for them there are pastors like john and rc sproul who've gone first by verse and of course steve lawson but if somebody wanted to find your sermons is there like a place if they yeah. wanted to find like dave jenkins <laughs> sermons where would that servants of grace podcast or i guess servants of grace sermons and there I answer, you know, questions and answers. I'm also on sermon audio, so you can find them there. And I do expository sermons every week. And I also do pulpit supply, um, usually every few months. So, but yeah, I mean. We'll just yeah, link to that. Sure. Giving you a little plug. We'll link to that yeah. in the descriptions. But yeah, I mean, talking about Bible reading, I mean, just like you said earlier, just take take little chunks, take it. Don't mm -hmm. see like you're not going to be. I think we talked about this one one time. I can't remember. Maybe I did. Um, some other convers random conversation, <laughs> but you're not going to be, you're not going to be e any more holy or, or mm -hmm. more holy or, or holy by reading through the bike. I mean, you're going to be, you know, grow in holiness by reading. So I'm not saying that, but you're not going to be any more holy than anybody else because you yeah. completed reading the Bible in a year. Now that's a good goal. Right. I don't want to, I, I'm the last person as the biblical literacy guy who wants to discourage you from reading the Bible, but also mm -hmm. don't want you. I also don't want you to beat yourself up about it. Like we're talking about, mm -hmm. because it, it's not something to beat yourself up about. It's not something to be overly hard on yourself about. It's something to, you know, shoot for a goal, but also have a realistic. And, and even it's like, like, you're, like I said earlier, how, how much of God's word can you access? Um, yeah. The question, question driving at home is um, really that you need God's, like you need food and water. So if there's one part of God's word that stands out to you, take the extra time. Like in high school, um, I for a whole year, all I read was Proverbs over and over and over and over again. Just books like I'll read over and over and over again, whether mm -hmm. I'm preparing, whether I'm teaching through that book or whatever, I'll, I'll read through it over and over and over again uh, to get it. Uh, same thing with the, when I, when I, doing pulpit supply, I'll practice five, six times during the week because I want to get that message in me like over and over and over again. So that when it, when it, when it, it, it comes out and in a way that hopefully, you know, um, I'm not like saying they're reading my notes. I'm, you know, <laughs> more or less like trying to focus on ministering to people through the word. And, mm -hmm. and that really should be our goal. Like, isn't even just to read Bible to fill our heads, but it's so that you know, God can grow us and so that we can be you, we can be instruments of, of the word. And so, yeah, I mean, all yeah. the guys that you, all the guys that you mentioned are, you know, Lawson, I mean, uh, MacArthur, uh, v v Vadi, um, all those guys are just phenomenal. Uh, Ligonier has a whole phenomenal of yep. things that you can, you know, go to town on. Yeah. So, you know. And it's so, it's, I'm so glad that you addressed this too, just saying like, we're, we're not discouraging you from reading scripture, but you talked about you're, you're not going to be holier if you read through the whole, the whole Bible. Um, and that's really what I wanted to get the point I wanted to get across. That shouldn't even be your, your uh, thought process. Like if you're going to scripture because you want to look or feel holy, then you're confused about where we are at as human beings uh, because we're wretched and depraved and just like you mentioned already, if but by the grace of God, if the Holy Spirit is sanctifying us and we're grow in grace, but we are 
the, the more that you grow in a recognizing God's holiness and the more that you see of yourself, you should be in the opposite direction and recognizing more of your need for God rather than more of your holiness. And, and so if you're going to scripture because you want to look or because you think that that's going to make you morally or any of that, that's that's not the need. You, you talked about eating food, drinking. That, that's what, the, what scripture is for us. It's, it's food for our soul. It's edifying. We don't eat food to be, um, okay, I'll put it like this. If you eat protein and only protein, you're not going to get muscles. That's not how it works. You have to exercise to get muscles. Just eating the food isn't going to change anything. So if you just pump all of the scripture in your brain and you're reading and reading and reading with the goal that you think is going to somehow magically make you something that you're not, then that's the wrong idea. It's going to get really discouraging. And God will, if you're saved, he's going to sanctify you in that. He's going to destroy that pride, that, that desire to be praised. The glory should only go to God. He's the only one worthy of glory and honor and praise. So if you're going to scripture to read so that you can brag about it, then you should really, you should be trembling and be praying because God will, he, if you're saved, he's going to sanctify that out of you, which is wonderful that God loves us enough to do that. He's not a derelict father. He will correct us whenever we're uh, sinning. And so we want to have a right attitude towards scripture from the very beginning. That way, when we're planning, we're not going to scripture so that we can say, look how much knowledge I have, look how much time I've spent in scripture, but rather that's our need. Like we should recognize our need for that, this great need for God's word to help us grow, to help us understand. And also, just like you mentioned, this is actually a joy, like the amazing fact that got us this whole book, whenever we don't deserve any of that. Like we, we deserve hell, but what he's given us instead is his word that we can study. And it really is a treasure that we can dig into not to boast about ourselves, but if you're really reading, sir, you should, you should be going the opposite direction. So I'm glad that you mentioned that we are, we're going to be sanctified. That's actually God, God's work through the Holy spirit. It's not going to sanctify you just to read chapters and chapters and chapters that, that's not actually what the purpose is of through scripture. You you need that. That's edifying. Also, God, we should learn about him. That's amazing that we get to learn about his attributes and all that cool stuff. The Bible is also just full of stuff. Like you said, Proverbs, there's I mean, the, the little, little things like this is helpful. There's, there's 31 Proverbs. There's usually 30 to 31 days in a month. That's what I, I do. I take a proverb each, each day and sometimes I'd miss it. And, and then the next day I'll have to go back and read too. But that's not me deeply seeing the proverbs. That's the overall viewpoint of it that I'm trying to chew on it. Like the, what do they say about the cow and the cud? Was chewing and chewing and chewing. The last name is Hereford, which is actually the name of a cow. So um, I can, I can refer to myself as a cow and not bad about it. Cause I'm already named after cows. No, I still feel bad about it. Anyways. Um, <laughs> It, it is important that we do that, urging that either. I, I remember whenever I first heard that, I think it was from MacArthur, the idea that you take a portion of scripture it each day until you really intake it. I think that's great. I did that with, the first book I did that with was Job and and it just completely and totally all of the false theology that I had towards, you know, God's sovereignty <laughs> and whatnot. It was fantastic. But if you don't have time to do that, is it better to take it verse by verse and learn and say, what, what is the that approach? If what you have is a small amount of time, how would you recommend people address the idea of planning? How should they plan for a future that we really don't know about? I don't know how much time we're going to have in a week from now. I think listening to the Bible, like we've talked about before, is really good using the ESV um, app, obviously. Yep. Um, and I, think I that's love that app. You can, you're listening when you're taking a shower, you're getting ready when you're driving, um, you know, around to work, uh, when you're cooking a meal, you know, so, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, making, you have the time to listen to the Bible. Maybe you don't have time to, you know, read the Bible, but you have time to listen, to digest some of God's word every day and mm -hmm. take that, take that time, even if it's five, 10 minutes, or, you know, that's why I think reading the book or listening to the book that you're pastors preaching with is, is a practical idea. And not to mention, your pa tell your pastor that you're doing that. Um, I guarantee you he'll have a space. And yeah. like, 
cool. Uh, and be encouraging and, to him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, I think that's just a good, good thing. So I think that that would probably be the biggest thing. And, and, you know, reading through what the, that'll do is it'll get you into that book. So you'll get, and you'll start seeing and understanding really what the author is talking about. You're, you're probably going to pick up more about what the, what your pastor is preaching on, on um, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Even if, if it's the most basic of observation. Okay. Well, that's something that you might not have known before. I mean, the things like that, that I'll be reading. I'm like, oh, I know, I'll right. make a connection. I'm like, wait a minute, that connects to this and that connects. To this. And it's just scripture. What the Holy Spirit is doing in those moments is he's illuminating scripture to you. He's, he's opening your eyes to see the truth of scripture. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants the scripture and to show you the truth from scripture and to point you to Christ and to send you out on mission. And, and we see that all throughout the Bible. So, you know, scripture interprets scripture. We call that the analogy phase and the Holy Spirit uh, to show us the truth about ourselves and about Christ and about what we're supposed to do. And so there's, there's a lot of balance, but there's also being as we've been real realistic, very yeah. practical. And he uses those things, um, even even the smallest amount, minute or two minutes or three minutes, he uses those things in our lives to help. And I mean, and and, and the real question that you should ask, I think, and it's a convicting one, is do you want to be useful to God? And I, if you're a Christian, the answer to that question is absolutely yes. So the answer yeah. to this whole episode is then you better get in the work. That's what the Holy Spirit is with you. He's wanting you to take the scripture and to press it into your heart and your life. And more and more and more. And so, you know, this just takes us again past legalism. It's not a chore. It's not a, it, it's a delight, but it's also duty in that you are responsible to do it. God isn't going to hold up a Bible in front of your face and say, <laughs> hey, guess what? This is God. You know, uh, he's just not going to. Yeah. It's, it's not if he gonna- did, he would do it with like a really deep, serious voice. So, yeah. Instead, uh, instead of a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I will tell you what to do. <laughs> oh, that's right. Exactly. Of <laughs> Dude, exactly. Nobody, nobody take that seriously because I'm not committing blasphemy. No. Okay. No, you are not verdict. You did not just claim that you are, in fact, God. It's okay, guys. He was just, yeah. he was, he was making a point. It was funny. I thought you mentioned this because the one thing that I really don't want people to do is use their lack of time as an excuse not to get insured. Because you just like you just have you know a few minutes, but you have to do God's glory. We, we want to make sure that we're using our time, but you want all the situation where you only have a few minutes. Eventually, things are going to change. Like, things happening will change. So get different in future. Uh, it, might, it might not get better, but it might get where you have a little bit more time. But also, as you're sure and you become used to the it's not really a pattern, but there's a rhythm to it, right? Like once you understand the kind of a certain book, like if you know who wrote Romans, the next time you come reading Romans and you're reading it for a second or a third time, it's going to be easier for you that time. You're going to be able to get through more of it. You're going to be able to take in more. So for a lot of people, they want to start where other people, it's taken them, you know, a decade to get to starting with just anything just starting is great but there are some folks out there because we've, we've mentioned the folks that don't do well with plans but out there that need that they need that sure and so if somebody is listening to this and they're like why i have to have that structure do you have like plans that that you've noticed are are helpful or what do you how do you recommend people who need that structure and plans to get things in order what do you think i think if you're a structure person then Start in Genesis, work your way through Revelation, you know. That's a good idea. Don't, don't, don't even feel like you have to, you know, finish it in a year. You know, I, I'm going right. to come back to that. Don't feel pressured to read it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Robert McMurray McShane plan I've, I've heard is good. I've always just done whatever I want to do. So I'll go, <laughs> you know, it's either a book I'm teaching through. So I'm reading that book or you know, I'll go back and I'll listen to the whole Bible, which is often what I do. And then, you know, when I'm working on a study or whatever, I'll do that or a sermon, I'll do that or an article or something like that, where I'll dig in more. But it, it's just, it's, it's a personal thing. You have to really own it yourself. Like nobody, I think that's probably what I, probably one of the last things I would say is you have to, what works for somebody else. We all have various differing learning styles. Like 
I can sit and listen to a sermon for an hour and be fine and take it in and be able to talk about it afterwards, as long as I've had some coffee or something like that, you know, where I'm actually like awake. Um, yeah. You know, there's times when uh, I'm like in a really bad place emotionally or mentally, and I don't take hardly any of the, any of the sermon. In, right. But, I, but I'm still, you know, there. Now, now that that you might be more like a, a written note type person. So maybe you want to write down notes or jot down thoughts as you read scripture because you want to write an article. You know, I mean, there can be multiple per gosh, that, that brings up another point. Even as you're reading the Bible, God can use that your, for mm -hmm. your not only for your own benefit, but like you could use that out of your own time with the Lord to to be used by God to be, you know, an instrument. So that's what yeah. I yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we covered it all. I'm really glad that we got to explain that balance too. It's super important. We really want to encourage people to to get in the word, but it's so frustrating at the end of every year to see all of these people and they're so excited and they sign up for plans and all of the different, oh my goodness, there are so many people with so many opinions and they're all telling you that their plan is the best plan and no, this plan is the better plan. And, and it, and it can, it can get very overwhelming and then you can get really quickly discouraged by like, especially, especially once you start to get to the so-and-so, but got so-and-so stuff that can get discouraging. And so our most of like the biggest point, why we're doing this, we really want to encourage everybody to understand that not everyone learns the same and that there, that's why we don't find in scripture anywhere where it says thou shalt read through the Bible in one year. It's not in there because everybody learns at a different rate and a different pace. And that is our, that, that this is a personal relationship. We don't need to compare ourselves to one another. Our compare be to Christ because that's who we're trying to be like. So if we're trying to be like Christ, we don't need to worry about how much so-and-so read throughout the week because so-and-so maybe is a faster reader than you or you're dyslexic like me and it's really difficult. So just pace yourself and remember that this is supposed to be a delight. It's supposed to be a joy, something that we can actually just get through bit by bit or chunk by chunk or portion by portion and just give yourself some grace and also be nice to everybody else too. Uh, don't be mean to people who say that they can only get through a verse or two a day. Don't be rude to people who can read through a lot more. Try not to, you know, attribute things to you don't know if is true. So be nice, be gracious even to yourself and really get into for the right reasons. This is a delight. This is a joy. You're going to learn and grow at the pace that God has set for you for whatever reason he has set it. That's that's where that's what we were. I'll close it out. Close it out. All right. Well, thank you for joining me again on this and talking about this really, really important topic. You guys, I hope that you're all prepared to have a really great new year or, you know, 2022. Is it 2022? Are we heading into 2022? Good grief. Oh my goodness. That's so weird. It just, it just feels like we're living in a sci-fi movie at this point with these kind of numbers. But anyways, I hope that you guys are all having a wonderful week. I'll see you all again later, maybe Thursday, Friday, whichever day by this point that I'm doing the Friday mega list. Hopefully I'm still doing Friday mega list, but I love you. Humble bees, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Tulips and Honey Show. We trust that you were helped and edified by this episode by either watching or listening to it. For more great content like this, please consider subscribing on your favorite podcast catcher so together we can magnify the name of the Lord, see his church strengthen, his people encouraged, and the lost reach with the gospel of Jesus. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. <laughs>